Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're new, my name is Jennifer and this is my eighth floss tube video. So I'm gonna start this one a little bit different. I want to do the Know Your Needle Worker tag because I, I haven't done it. Normally people start off with that as their first video, but I don't know, I didn't think about doing it until now. So what I'm wanting to do is start off with the tag and then I'll go into a few whips that I have and just a few updates. So I have it written down in front of me and there are, I'm sure you guys have all heard it, um, about 10 questions. So the first one is where do you live? I live in Colorado, um, Colorado Springs to be exact. I'm about um, an, a little over an hour south of Denver. Um, I grew up, born and raised in Los Angeles. Uh, if you're familiar with the area specifically, um, I grew up in LA and then I lived in Whittier um, a long period of my life. Then I went to Florida, I moved to Florida with my husband for five years and we just recently got to Colorado about two months ago. So yeah, it's been an adventure. Uh, let's see, number two, what do you do for a living? I am self-employed, I have a small business. I sell decals, um, which are commonly used for like Yeti tumblers or car windows or laptops, things like that. It is uh, stressful at times, but I love it. I love being home and having my own schedule and being flexible. Um, it comes with its pros and cons, but overall, like I'm just so happy to to have the luxury of staying home, I guess, and just kind of um, being able to go to a doctor's appointment without having to ask for time off or, you know. The hard part though is I just want to stitch <laughs> or I just get like so lazy some days, I don't want to work and I just want to stay in bed or, you know, when you're at home, you don't have to get ready technically. So I'm in just PJs, I get up, shower, PJs again, I'm just comfy, so all I wanna do is just not do much. But I have to push myself every day to work. And so while my husband's at work, I'm at work too. That is just like how I, um, I guess like that's what helps me force myself to, to get to work. Um, so yeah, I do love my job. Uh, and it, you know, it's, it's great, but the holidays are coming. And so just having to do extra inventory and get things ready for the holiday is a little bit stressful. So, um, yeah, but that's what I do. I do decals. Let's see. Number three, do you have any children? No, we do not yet. Hopefully in the future, um, number four, do you have any pets? I do. You probably just heard my dog. I have two dogs and I've talked about them before. So if you're, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I have a little, um, like 17 pound multi poo. He's nine years old. And I also have a, she's almost three year old Great Dane, which she's going crazy right now. Let me see if I could show you. Hold on, let me, how do I flip this around? I don't know how to, I'm just gonna try to do this. Hi, babe. Oh, why is your ear like that? Chance, Chance, come here. Hi, babe. Anyway, okay, so yes, I have two dogs and I love them to death. Um, if you're familiar with Great Danes, I mean, they're just, they just like steal your heart. Like they're just the sweetest ever. We're so in love with her. Anyway, okay. Question number five. What are your other hobbies besides stitching? I don't really have time for a lot of other things. Um, but I am just like crafty in general. My favorite hobby is quilting. Um, I have not quilted though in quite a while. Um, I just, I haven't had time. And then when I do have time, I'm just exhausted from the day and I just sit on the couch and stitch. 
you know, when you quilt, if you're familiar with quilting, you know, it, it's not, it's more of a, how do I explain it? It takes more effort than stitching. So, you know, to go and get and figure out your pat, like, how do I explain this? I won't go into details. It's just, it's, it's, I love quilting. I haven't done it in a while. I want to get back into it. Um, sewing as well. I used to sew um, purses and wallets and keychains and all these things. I, I love sewing and quilting. Um, that is my, I would say my number one hobby, but it's been competing with cross stitching. Um, what else do I like to do? I like to read, but I don't get enough reading um, done because I'm always cross stitching. Um, I crochet a little bit. Um, I've never actually completed a crochet project. I have a whole bunch of them started, but I've never actually finished any. Um, what else? I think that's it. Um, what's next? Let's see. So these next few questions are like, what is your favorite block? Like movie, show, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't ever have favorites. <laughs> like I just can't, it's hard for me to choose favorites. I'm not one to be like, what's your favorite color? And I could give you a color. I just, I don't know. I don't like to decide. So I'll give you just a few examples. So this next question is what is your favorite movie? <sighs> um, Titanic, Selena, Hocus Pocus, I love Hocus Pocus. And The Sound of Music, I haven't seen that in a long time, but I used to watch that all the time. Love that movie. So I would say those are my favorites. Let's see, what is your favorite TV show? Grey's Anatomy, love Grey's Anatomy. And I was late to the whole Grey's Anatomy thing. Like, if you could hear my dog, she's drinking water, I'm sorry. Um, I just started watching Grey's Anatomy maybe two years ago. It's been on forever, but I been, binge watched Grey's Anatomy with my husband and now that we're caught up, I'm just like, I just want the next season to start. Like, hurry up already. I love it. Um, Sons of Anarchy was really good. And don't judge me, but Jane the Virgin, I love corny stuff. What can I say? My older sister always tell. well actually both of my sisters always tell me that I'm lame. I like lame things, but what can I say? Um, books. What is your favorite book? The Diary of Anne Frank. I like books that have to do with war. A lot of the times I will um, lean toward those books, especially World War II, like the Holocaust. I don't know what it is. It just fascinates me because it's so, it just sounds so crazy and unrealistic that you read these things and it's, it's just crazy. Um, and I really like the book, the, the Child Called It. Again, I think there's something about books that fascinate me when you just hear about these things, these events that have occurred and it, they're just crazy and I don't know, I love those books. So, Child Called It is good. What is your favorite music? Or I guess what type of music? Um, I like R&B, pop, hip hop, a little bit of everything. Um, Beyonce, John Legend, um, some Eminem. I also like some, if you're Hispanic or um, I guess Latino, I like reggaeton, which is like Winston and Yandel and um, Aventura and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm Hispanic, so I like Spanish music as well. So that's kind of what I go towards is like Beyonce or depends how I'm feeling for the day. Okay, let's see here. Um, number 10, what one word best describes you? Um, Zoe, stop it. I would say... 
Obsessive is kind of, that sounds kind of negative, huh? Organized? That's a better way of putting it. I would say I'm organized. Um, but if I want to be straightforward, I guess obsessive. I, I jump into things. I don't dip my toes. And I like everything to be a certain way. Very organized. I have like my process of doing things. If, you know, if I'm going to buy something or if I'm going to do something, I fully research everything and make sure I understand everything, which could be a good thing and a bad thing. Because sometimes I just stress myself out over something that you don't know. You could only do as much research and then you have to actually do the whatever it is that you're doing for you to just understand it sometimes. So it could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. I like to think I'm organized. Um, so yeah. And I think that was the last question. Um, so I didn't want to make it super long. I know some people have um, know your need of worker tags and they're like an hour long. And I'm totally okay with that. I love watching those videos, but I just can't talk about myself that much for that long. I just, I don't know. I feel like I've already answered everything in what, 10 minutes. So, um, let's see personal life update. I'm going to try to be a little more organized today. It is officially cold in Colorado. So, if you've seen my last videos, I'm like, it's cold, but then it's hot and I'm confused. I'm not from here, so I don't know what's going on. Well, it's officially cold. It's in the 30s, 40s. Um, heater is always on in the house now. And being from California and Florida, I don't have clothes for this type of weather. Like, I have been shopping. <laughs> um... So I'm not prepared. We're trying to get prepared. It did snow a little bit um, this past week, uh, this past weekend, yeah. So it didn't stick. It wasn't like a, a big amount of snow, but there is snow in the mountains. And it was nice to see a little bit of snow, but it's freaking cold. <laughs> it's so cold. My dogs didn't want to go outside. They're like, what is this white crap all over the floor? So. Um, it did snow, so that was exciting. It only it was only like for one day, um, and right now it is 36 degrees, and it feels good in the house when the heater's on. I still get a little cold. I'm always cold though, so I always have like fuzzy socks on and um, like tights and stuff, uh, sweaters, because I'm just cold all the time. Um, so yeah, it's finally cold here. I like it though, don't get me wrong. Um, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I started reading a book and I actually heard about it from another floss tuber. Let me see, her name is Little House of Stitches. And by the way, I love her accent. I just discovered her, love it. Like love all her videos, she's working on an elephant. Um, Crossage Project and it's beautiful. So she mentioned this book, The Tattooist of Auschwitz. Let's see if you can see this. By Heather Morris. And I started reading this the other day and it is so good. Um, like I said earlier, I love reading books that have to do with wars and this one is you know the time of the holocaust it's about the auschwitz concentration camp and just like a quick summary um there's a jew that is forced to work at the concentration camp and um he is a tattooist there so he has to tattoo the numbers onto the incoming um prisoners so he has to tattoo everyone um, and, and it just goes over like what he experienced, his struggles, and it, it is like a love story too. Um, he falls in love with, and I'm not, I haven't gone this far, so I'm not, um, trying to spoil it. It's in the summary. Um, it's technically a love, par like partially like a love story. Um, 
but one of the girls that he tattoos, he ends up um, falling for her. Um, so it's based on a true story and I really am into it. I haven't gotten too far yet. I'm a few chapters in and I'm already hooked. Uh, so it says it's an international bestseller. So you might've already heard of it. You might've already read it. If you have, let me know. Um, but it's really good and I have, um, my husband's going to read this after and then my sister's going to read this after and I'm sure somebody else, we like to pass books around. So, so there's that. So I started reading that it was really good. By the way, how do you guys find time to read and stitch and work? Like I find it so difficult. Like I'm trying to get these cross stitch projects done for the holidays, like on time you know, and I work during the day. I usually stop working around five and then I have dinner. And then by the time I sit down at the end of the day, I only have a few hours to stitch. When am I supposed to read? Like it's either you read or you cross stitch. So I've been trying to find the balance because I used to love, I mean, I love reading. I used to read all the time when I was younger and I just can't find the time anymore. Um, I did run an errand earlier. I had to go to the dealership and sit there for over an hour and a half. Nothing got resolved. But anyway, um, I could have taken the book, but I'm just not used to that. So it's just I have to get in the habit of just carrying it with me and taking it with me. Um, so, yeah. How do you guys do it? Let's see. What else? Oh, one last thing for personal update. My husband is going... Um, he's going to be away for about a month for a training for work in about a month. So he'll be leaving in about a month for about a month. And so I should have a little more stitching time. The bad thing is he won't be here for Thanksgiving. So, um, I said that weird. He will not be here for Thanksgiving. So I might fly to him. It's like across country. So... I might, I might go over there for Thanksgiving. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. Or I might just stay here alone and stitch. I would be totally okay with that. Um, okay. We are 17 minutes in. And let's talk about some cross stitch now. Whips. Prairie Schooler Night Flight. Let's see. Where is my pattern? Okay, I had started this a few weeks ago. Prairie Schooler Night Flight. Um, let me take this off. This is my progress. So I got all the border done, which I thought I was gonna get bored of it because just black there's just so much black I actually I didn't hate it toward the end though I was just so antsy to get the frame or the border done that I was starting to get impatient but it's kind of calming just having one color and just stitching you know I started a new show on Netflix and um oh quick thing I had my husband put the TV or connect the TV upstairs because we had um, we have a TV downstairs in the living room that we usually use, and then we hadn't plugged in the new the our other TV since we moved here. We just hadn't done it, um, and so NHL he signed up for NHL because hockey season started, and he's a huge hockey fan, and so I haven't been able to really watch TV down here because he's watching hockey. So I had him connect the TV upstairs and I started a new show and kind of set up a secondary stitching spot upstairs in bed which is a good thing and a bad thing because I get comfy in bed and then I just want to lay there and not stitch but anyway um so I worked on this while I started watching a new show and I got so into the show I didn't realize how much stitching I had done I I stitched a lot without even realizing so that was nice so if you want to stitch faster or you want to stitch um, I guess without really thinking about it, I put on a really good show. Um, so yeah, got a lot done. So I'm down here in the house area right over here. My goal is to finish this by Halloween. 
I was doing really good, but then I switched to my next whip, which is the Tiny Modernist. Mm -hmm. um, Haunted Mansion cell. So I got this room done. Looks super cute. And so today I'm gonna start working on this room over here. And I already got all my colors ready to go so that I could just start. So I put everything like in this little, I got these a lot years ago. Um, it actually comes, the brand is Iris, I-R-I-S. And it actually is like a pack of six of these and it comes in a bigger container where all of these live in. Um, but I just kind of like to, I either take it with me in the car, um, I keep my needles and scissors in there because it's a hard case so nothing's gonna poke out at you. So that works for me. So I took out all the different flosses for, um, for the next room so that I could just get started on it today. So I finished that one last night actually and then today I'm gonna start here. I'm so behind on this. The um, final room was actually released um, or no, the final room will be released on the 17th, which is next Wednesday, I believe. Let me see here. Yep, next Wednesday. So currently, this is what the current version looks like. Super, super cute. So I'm going to be working on the bookshelves with the ghost in the chair. Um... So I will be working on that and I really, really, really want to like focus on this and try to catch, I know it's, I'm not gonna catch up by the time they release the last room, but I want to really finish this by the end of this month. So if I could finish this and my Prairie Schooler one by the end of the month, like that is my goal. Can I do it? I don't know. I don't know guys. And I'm really craving some hot chocolate right now. I think because it's so cold. I'm going to go make some after this. I should have made it before. Okay. All right, what's next? Hold on really quick. Mm. Last, um, my last video, I had showed a whip my Beauty and the Beast whip and you know what I realized I haven't worked on this um, and I'm surprised nobody left a comment be below um, why is the Beast missing his hands what the hell I don't know what I'm thinking guys I forgot to stitch his hands uh, so I need to go back in there and just stitch his hands like I don't I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I think those are all the whips. I've, I've really been working hard and trying to get a lot of stitches in on those, um, those two projects because of Halloween. I have uh, one other project that I, I mean, let's be honest, I have several that I want to start. But I have one that I really, really want to start. I don't know if I'm going to because... If I start it, I will not, uh, I know that I will not hit my goal for these two projects. But the one that I really, really want to start is Hocus Pocus. Um, and I think I shared it last time. I got the, um, I got it off of Etsy and I really, really want to start it, but I just don't have time. And my plan was to start it while watching the movie because I own the DVD I love that movie and I watch it every um, like every October I watch it and so this is what it looks like and it's by Good Morning Maui on Etsy and I'll link it down be below but um, I really really want to do this project but unfortunately I think it might have to wait until next year there's also, and I'm going to show you right now in my haul, one other project that I want to work on, or two other ones <laughs> that are going to have to wait until next year. Anyway, um, okay, haul, haul, not much, not much at all.
but okay I bought a needle minder off of the Facebook group stash unloading cross stitch only I've talked about this before that that Facebook group is dangerous I'm telling you um, it's just addicting so here is okay I don't know where the camera is at over here okay I'm sure you could see that it is Jack and Sally from the Nightmare Before Christmas and I think it's super cute I've been wanting one for my Halloween pieces and that is just perfect super cute love it and the magnets are really small I really like it you can see the magnet there and then I guys I have been looking for this pattern some people call it unicorn pattern I don't know if I would consider it my unicorn pattern I don't really have a unicorn I guess this was it I got it I found it I got it Zoe stop it um I have to update you guys on my dog by the way um anyway prairie moon old blue eyes I have been wanting this since I saw it on McKenna's YouTube I believe that's the first time I saw it stitching stitching and sequins she's here on floss tube I'm sure you've heard of her like a while back she had this chart I believe I saw it I loved it and it, it's kind of, you know it's a like a skull like a what is it called oh my god lost my train of thought I don't know what it's called exactly but it's one of those like sugar there you go sugar skull oh my god Jennifer it's a sugar skull and I love sugar skulls my birthday is actually November 2nd which is day of the dead and so it's just I don't know it's just one of those things so I have been wanting this for a while. I've been looking for it. It's out of print. Obviously, it's Prairie Moon. So I have been searching for it, and then I found out that there were there are, um, I believe, five skulls in this like a series or a group. I'm not sure exactly how to um, how they categorize it, but um, I pulled up all the five because. Um, I had found a few skulls, but it wasn't this one. This is the one that I wanted. I had pulled up the other five or the other four and I showed my husband. I said, do you like any, which one's your favorite? Like, do you like any of these? Um, and of course this one was his favorite out of all of them, <laughs> but he had a second favorite, which was this one, Prairie Moon and Lua Flowers. Now the place that I had found a few of the skulls was actually um, Stitcher's Paradise in Las Vegas. I had called them, they said they had a few skull um, patterns and there were, they had some, but they were not these two. Of course the two that I wanted, they did not have, but they had a few other ones. Anyway, I think they had like Ace of, I forget I, I don't want to give wrong information but they didn't have these so I kept looking I kept looking and then somebody on Facebook saw that I was looking for it message me great price got them in the mail I'm so excited I really want to start these I plan to do them side by side and frame them up for Halloween next year because I don't have time this year so I'm super excited about these so these two and Hocus Pocus, I plan to have done by Halloween of next year. Okay, hold me to it. I really, I really, really want to. Okay, so that was it. That was my haul. I, I did buy, um, I'm sure you guys heard that Lizzie Kate came out with sampler claws, um, which, I had to buy, of course. Do I have a picture of it? I don't know that I have a picture of it. Um, but if you wanna look it up, I know they have it on one, two, three stitch and it's actually like right on their front page depending on when you're watching this video. But today it's on their front page 
It's sampler claws. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I already ordered it. It's already being shipped to me and I will show you guys on my next video. Um, so I bought that and then I bought some more anchor black and white floss for a few, you know, I'm doing a lot of black stitching. So ordered some of that from 123 Stitch and that is um, in the mail as we speak. What else? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I dyed another piece of fabric because I wanted something for like something Halloween for Hocus Pocus. I'm not going to stitch that after all. I thought I was going to have some time, but I don't. But my inspiration was this fabric that I had bought. It's called Intrigue. I had bought it at my local needle shop and I wanted something very, very similar. So I figured I could try to replicate this and I think I did a pretty good job. Let me just tell you. If you could see that. So I like the way it came out. It's really nice. It needs to be ironed a little bit more, but I really like the way it came out. So I think I'm going to use this for Hocus Pocus next year. So I, I dyed that and that's on 28 count, um, just white, even weed that I had bought um, at Michael's. All right, guys, I had to take a quick pause because the dogs were going crazy. And then my husband came home for some paperwork that he needed for work and he's gone now. By the way, I cannot record in front of him. It's just awkward. I just can't do it anyway. So I'm back and let me just say that my dogs, they're so calm for the most part. They lay down, they're lazy, they're fine. I swear as soon as I start recording, they just wanna play and run around like maniacs. I don't understand it, like I don't know. Took um, advantage and made myself some hot chocolate. Anyway, back to what I was saying. What was I saying? Okay, yes. So, my birthday is coming up in a few weeks, November 2nd. I am going to start a birthday sell. I don't know exactly what I want the pattern to be, but I think it's going to be sampler claws because it's just perfect for the holidays. It's right after Halloween. Everyone wants to start something for Christmas, right? Um, I have a few other patterns though that might be good as well. I have a Lizzie Kate Seasons and they have a winter one in there that's really cute. Um, and I forget what else I would have to look, but I do have a, a, a couple of other prospects, I guess. Um, would anybody be interested in joining me on my birthday sal? Let me know down below. And if so, would you be interested in doing the sampler claws from Lizzie Kate? Let me know down below because I want to make sure that you guys have time to purchase it and get it in your hands as well. But that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. Um... So yeah, let me know if you're interested in joining along. I've never, I've never really heard of um, like birthday sell, but I guess it's a thing that we do. We, as in the floss tube community, I, I just didn't know. I watched so much floss tube, I didn't know um, that this was a thing. Um, so yeah, let me know. <sighs> Let's see. Um... Let's talk about stands for a second. I use Q-snaps and I usually hold them in my hand. The most common size that I use is an 11 by 11. I do have like an eight by eight that I use, but I have more 11 by 11 than anything else. Um, and like I've mentioned in my previous projects or my previous videos, I don't 
like to remove my projects from my Q-snaps. That's why I have multiple Q-snaps because I'm too lazy to change them out. I'm just being honest. It's just a hassle because I like my patterns to be on there or my fabric to be on the Q-snap straight. And a lot of times they go a little crooked and it bugs me and I have to do it until I get it right. And it's Remember earlier when we were doing the uh, get to know your needle worker tag and number 10, I said I was a little obsessive. Yeah, I am a little organized, right? Um, so I wanted a frame for my Q snaps because my arm or my shoulder, my left shoulder hurts from holding it up. So I had my husband help me out and he made me a PVC, um, a PVC custom, you know, little stand, which I love by the way, love it. But then, um, and I'll show you right now, but I was going on, I was on Instagram looking at everyone's cross stitch stuff. I'm very active on Instagram. Love it. And I'm scrolling through and you know how those ads come up. Um, you know, like Amazon ads or just random stuff. It's like, like they know your algorithm. They as in the, the internet world, right? Um, they know what you've been searching for. They know everything, right? So sponsorships come up or advertisements come up of things that you're interested in. So I'm scrolling through Instagram and then this stand comes up on Amazon. Click on it, curious to see the price, and it's $35. I had good reviews, I figured I would try it. Um, I wasn't gonna get it at first. I was like, well, I'm really happy with the PVC one that he made me, um, but he's like, you know, that's a really good price. Uh, it has good reviews, just try it and see if you like it. I was like, okay. So purchased it, love it. The only thing, that I've noticed is that the screws loosen up pretty quickly. Like from one day to the next, you have to just adjust them, like tighten them before you start stitching. But while you're stitching, it usually is pretty good. Um, so I just tighten them, adjust them, use it, it's fine. I like it. I like that it's more adjustable than the PVC one. Um, so then I was like, well, I, I'm having some issues because I don't, I'm not used to not flipping my work to the back. You know, I do the loop method and then I flip my work to be able to do the loop method. I learned how to do the loop method from the front, so that's not an issue now. However, I'm having an issue with finishing off my thread without flipping the work to the back. I have looked up videos, I have done some research on the pin stitch ending with the pin stitch or a waist knot. I. It's not that I don't like it, I find it difficult to do. So I try to do, I'm not a fan of the waist knot. I just, it's just, mm -mm. I don't know. I just can't get used to it. However, the pin stitch, I thought, well, that's not too bad, right? The pin stitch sounds pretty good. So I try to do the pin stitch. It's just, I'm, I'm doing two over two on 28 or 32 count and so I try to get into that center hole and it's just too difficult like the stitches are too tight to be able to get underneath that so you have, that you don't see the pin stitch if you're familiar with the pin stitch you might know what I'm talking about but I just found it too complicated I don't know like I just it wasn't working for me and I was working on the tiny modernist um, haunted mansion and there's a lot of like color changes so I gave up and I took it off of the stand and I just started flipping my work and doing you know what I'm used to doing what I'm comfortable with so then I'm like okay well in that case I like the PVC stand more because that one has arms to where you just rest the Q snap and then I could easily take it off, flip it over. So I like that about it. Um, so there's like pros and cons to each one. I 
so I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep the wooden one or not um, let me see if I could I don't know how to flip this thing over um, let's see just have to do this for now so this is the PVC one that my husband made this part here is um, it could come out and we have two different sizes. So we have three different sizes total. I have two more of these so that I can make this bigger, like wider or more narrow depending on the size of the Q-snap. So I really like that. These legs, we could not, um, they weren't sturdy enough. So when I was putting the Q-snap on here, this thing was falling forward. So what we did is we bought caps. If you see those caps, Ooh, I'm backwards on the camera. See these caps here? Um, we actually filled the legs, or the leg over there, the back two legs. We filled them with, um, with what's it called, BB pallets. Because BB pallets are tiny and they're really heavy. So we filled it up, capped it off, and now it stands good and it's sturdy. So just a tip in case you need to know. And then this one is, um it's the wooden one so you, i place my q snap in here and then you could adjust it and there are all the knobs the knobs are all on the side so i really like this as well i'm just not sure if i'm going to keep it or if i'm going to just use this i i i don't know maybe i'll keep both i, I have no idea how oh, sweet girl hey sweet girl She's huge. Yes, baby. So yeah. Um, I don't know how to flip the camera. Sorry guys. So there's that. Um, do you have any recommendations on finishing floss? Like finishing off your your floss that you're working with without having to flip to the back, let me know. Because I haven't decided yet what I want to do. Luckily, Amazon has like a 30 day window that you could return stuff. One more quick thing. My dog, my big one, my great dame, her name's Zoe. She hurt herself, or uh, we're assuming that she hurt herself. Her um, paw, I don't know if for dogs, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Her thumb, I don't know if that's what it's called on her paw, but her little finger, I guess. Her nail was like all swollen. Her finger was swollen and then her nail looked like it was um, like loose and we're like, the heck did she hurt herself like she must have like hit her nail somewhere and we noticed this because she started um like licking her nail a lot and we're like what the heck is she doing so we took a closer look and then we found out that her nail was kind of like loose and then her finger was like really um like inflamed or whatever stop it So we're like, okay, let's just keep an eye on it. And if it gets worse, we'll take her to the vet. Because of course this happens on Friday night. Um, and the vet's closed all weekend. And it's a long weekend. Four days off. Friday through Monday they were closed. Anyway, keep an eye on it. The next day, sure enough, thank God she was outside doing her business. And all of a sudden there's blood everywhere. Her nail's like half hanging off. If you're squeamish, I'm sorry. So at this point we're like, do we like rip it off? Like it's like dangling, you know? But part of me is like scared. Like, no, there's like nerve in the nail. Like who knows if that's what's hanging. I, I don't know. I don't know. Don't feel comfortable pulling it off. Um, so we kind of like reinforced it and put peroxide and wrapped it up in like medical tape. And we're like, well, we're gonna have to take her to, to the vet when they open. We just have to keep cleaning it and take her to the vet when they open. So Monday comes along and the whole nail, like every day we're taking off the Band-Aid, 
cleaning it up, making sure it doesn't get infected. Monday, the nail falls off. Like, we take off the Band-Aid and the nail is black at this point. I mean, it's, it's dark. We, we know it's dead. I barely touch it and it just comes right off. And we put peroxide, we put um, some ointment on it to prevent infection, wrap it up again. It's not bleeding anymore. And the swelling looks like it's going down. Call the vet today and they're uh, booked for the next two weeks. They're like, if you want, you could go to another vet or you could go to an, like an emergency vet, which it's technically not an emergency. I'm just worried about infection. But we're really good at cleaning it. Um, however, I went to run an errand this morning, so I wasn't here to watch her. And she took off her band-aid while we were gone. And we just put some more ointment on. And I'm going to like, it doesn't have a band-aid right now. This is the first day that it doesn't have a band-aid. So we're just seeing if maybe it just needs some air. Because, you know, if you keep wrapping it, all the moisture gets trapped and... We're seeing if it's gonna help heal it, but I'm just watching her very closely so that she doesn't start like licking it because um, we don't have, want an infection. So we're gonna give it a few more days. Um, and if we have to, we'll have to just take her to another vet. Um, hey, Zoe. She's licking it as we speak. Zoe, hey. This is why I have to watch her like super carefully, but it's some, almost impossible sometimes. Anyway. So that's what's going on with my dog. If you are a vet tech or anything, you have any recommendations, let me know. Um, I'm actually happy that the nail fell out because it looked like that is what was bothering her. Um, because it, she's fine now. Before she, it looked like it was really bothering her. Now she's completely fine. It doesn't even hurt her, it looks like. Um, so yeah. I'm trying to think if I have anything else to share with you guys. Um, I don't think so. I think that's all that I have. So my goal is to work on my two Halloween pieces. My tiny modernist haunted mansion cell. And my prairie, my prairie schooler night flight. So these two, hopefully you will see some good progress on. And I will also update on Instagram. If you want to follow me on Instagram, if you don't already, it's Jen underscore crafts, J E N N underscore crafts. Also, a few videos ago, I did a grime guard video, like how I make my grime guards. And the grime guard that I was making in the video was for McKenna, who is stitching in sequins. And love her. She's hilarious. And she gave me a shout out. So thank you, McKenna. So I will link her down below. I'm sure you've already heard of her. She's awesome. She's always rocking her sequins and stuff. So shout out to McKenna. She is always working hard, trying to help out the... Um, the LNS in Arizona. So she's always going live on Facebook and stuff. Um, so if you are interested, I will also link the Facebook group down below so you could go check that out. And she goes live almost every week and she does like sales from the actual LNS. So um, yeah, alrighty then. I think that's it. I will talk to you guys later. I want to make a video on um, like how I organize my fabric because I really, basically I want to show you how I do it so that you could give me a better way of doing it because I'm struggling guys. I'm running out of, I'm running out of space. It's pretty bad. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for all of your comments. I've been getting more subscribers and more comments and it just motivates me to continue making videos and to continue stitching and um, yeah, I love it. So please continue to leave comments. If you are new and um, you have a floss tube, let me know down below. I wanna check it out. I love finding new floss tubers. So please let me know and 
I will film next week and give you an update and I should have my um, Beauty and the Beast. I should have the Beast's hands at least stitched in by then and some progress on my two Halloween whips. So, and I'll give you an update on my book if you're interested. So that's all. I'll talk to you guys next week and I hope you're doing well. Bye guys.